Uh, we had the rand trading uh, very close to seven rand ten yesterday, back at those levels this morning, and it really looks like everything conspiring against the rand yesterday. So it was global factors, but also local factors. Yes, absolutely, Stephen. I mean, broadly, it was two main factors. We had some bad local data, um, and then there's also increased risk aversion uh, globally that saw the, the dollar strengthen. So locally, we had very disappointing GDP data for the third quarter, growth slowing to 2.6% in the quarter against uh, consensus estimates of over 3%, and we had anticipated an acceleration to 3.6%, actually. Um, in addition, to that, we had a, a drop in business confidence for the fourth quarter, dropping off a two and a half year peak. Um, and if you look uh, to the international factors, we had better than expected um, growth in, in the US. Yesterday, they released their second estimate of third quarter GDP growth, and that revealed an acceleration in growth. They had initially anticipated that the US economy grew by 2% in the quarter, and that was upgraded yesterday to 2.5%. Um, and in addition to all of that, we had some tensions between North Korea and South Korea, as well as some trouble in Ireland over their debt package. Um, and all of that played into increased risk aversion. And of course, that played into a flight to safety and saw the dollar strengthen. So the RAND was really hit on all fronts yesterday. Well, just looking at that GDP reading, and as you said, growth of 2.6% against expectations of uh, over 3%. Of course, the third quarter was quite a difficult quarter for the economy. We had a number of strikes, particularly in the auto sector. And of course, we, we are seeing global demand not really picking up this year. Absolutely, Stephen. I mean, I think you, you've really uh, covered all the issues there. So firstly, the, the pickup in global growth hasn't been as strong as one might have expected at the beginning of the year. And secondly, the, the, the number of strikes in the private sector, um, as well as in the public sector, and we saw that especially reflected in the, the drop in manufacturing output in the quarter, certainly didn't help uh, GDP growth. And, and I think those are the two key reasons why we saw that disappointing number yesterday. We also had the Economic Development Minister, Ibrahim Patel, laying out his new growth plan yesterday. And uh, among other things, it's calling for a looser monetary policy. It's calling for a more competitive RAND. It obviously wants to create 5 million jobs over the next 10 years, pick up growth to 7%. How do you think that was interpreted by the market, or was it very difficult to see because of all the noise coming from outside of South Africa? I think it, it really was very difficult to see, Stephen, as you say, there was a lot of noise yesterday. But there are also some very uh, controversial aspects to the plan. Amongst others, it envisages a state mining company to uh, promote local beneficiation. Um, I'm not sure that that would have gone down well with that particular sector. Um, they also proposed, as you said, um, looked for a more accommodative uh, monetary stance, which of course raises questions then about how they're going to manage the relationship with the Reserve Bank, which is actually um, allowed to independently set monetary policy. Um, so uh, on the whole, I think everyone is just waiting for greater clarity as to how they plan to implement these, uh, these, these plans. Um, but uh, I don't think that you could actually highlight, I don't think you could isolate this as being either uh, positive or negative for the RAND yesterday. And Navuya, just quickly, um, consumer price index out this morning around 11.30. Uh, just refreshes on what Standard Bank's expecting from that. Well, we're in line with market consensus for this month. We're expecting CPI to have picked up to 3.3% in October. Um, October is a fairly low survey month for the index, so we're not expecting much of an, there's limited potential for an upside surprise. Um, but nevertheless, we think that inflation bottomed in September and, and it's going to increase modestly from here on out.